Hello YouTube, my name's Sean Connors and welcome back to the Outsiders channel. Today I'm going to be doing a sort of um, uh, an update on mailbag program and a few little bits all rolled into one in 10 minutes as best as I can. And I'll quickly first start off with a little update. Uh, set a video up two days ago regarding um, getting together people for May the 4th next year in 2013 here in near where I live in Northamptonshire. That is looking like it's going to be a success already. We've already got six confirmed um, as many as 10 that might total might make it, and that's only early days. So I think if we keep updating it, keep spreading the word, I do believe we'll end up with a, a full venue of at least 30 people. That's going to be very exciting for a full day event. I, I'm really, really looking forward to that. So thank you. Keep spreading the word. There will be more updates on this. So looking good. And from far away as well, we've got some coming from Europe. If we could get one from America, wow, well, that would be something. It could be the VIP for the day. Who knows? Um, anyway, so I on the... On to the main part of the, the focus of what I want to talk about here. Um, I received through a fantastic letter here from a lady who just identifies herself as Amanda. Apparently she's a long time um, a long time reviewer of my stuff on the YouTube channel and, and various other things. What I, I know for a fact is that she's also put quite a lot of my stuff on her blog and things and I think it's it's great that you get this type of support and this type of buying from outside sources it just sort of says well done you know you're doing you're doing something right which is and a number of you guys out there on the youtube world have certainly had this and i think it's fantastic and it does show that we are making a difference in the wider community and it's it's sometimes it's easy to forget that but her letter is about um she understands the basics i'm just going to summarize it she understands the basics of um how to put together quickly an ad-libbed NPC, you know, having a list of personalities, having a name, that sort of thing, all the basics. And she says she does that very well now, but she struggles to find the emotion of the character so that they really come alive off the page. And she asks, as that's something that I do um, seem to do fairly effortlessly, how, and uh, you know, how, how can I possibly help give further tips and advice on that? It's certainly something I cover off in um, more advanced videos. I do apologise, I'm going to grab my tea. I'm going to actually have a drink this time, because normally I grab it and then I forget and carry on talking. So I'm going to have a sweep. But, um, yeah, so how, how do I do that? So I, I'm, going to try and, I'm going to try and really and I find the way to say this as, as succinctly as I can. I would say it's very it, the, the way that I do it um, is very much this way. And I haven't thought about this again. I just want to come on camera and just shoot the thoughts as they hit me and and really just go with the flow on this and it's now it's now starting to form in my mind the thing I need to say so effectively what I tend to do is I if I want I, I tend to put myself I think about people I think about instantly circumstances that have happened in the past I think about powerful memories that have an impact on how my state of mind is and how it affects my body language so for example when I want to portray a pretty powerful NPC, yeah, a slimy, horrible, potentially nasty NPC. Um, particularly when I'm referring to women here. I mean this nicely, Amanda. I'm not saying that you're like this, but it's just a very easy way for me to get that emotion. I think about breakups. I think about situations where I feel I've been treated poorly. I and I try to portray that in the mannerisms, not the way that I speak, but it's more in the mannerism, just it's there in my head, you know, it's really strange, if you've got those thoughts about, yeah, I know, I don't like you, I've never liked you, I've never loved you, and you've got those thoughts in the back of your head, I tell you what, it really brings it alive when you're um, trying to pull out the emotion, now obviously, if you scale that down, you know, you're talking about shopkeep, you know, it's very simple, you just take some emotion that you've had that day, or that are really vivid, but good, you know, something a bit more positive maybe, or something not so. You know, you had a call come through and the person on the end of the phone just wouldn't bloody take no for an answer. And straight away you've got the basis of this character. So, you know, you can imagine, you know, again, just find your voice with it. I mean, when we talk about voices, and I'll go into voices in a minute, um, don't worry too much about what people think of the voice. You know, don't does it really matter? It's an instant NPC. Now, it might be, I've said this before in some videos, that that NPC becomes far more important than the sum of its parts because the players like it. They, they just fall in love with that NPC for some reason. And then, you know, that's a great way that you want to, you know, particularly if it's a home base, they come back and see them a lot. It's great. It can build on something much more grand and much more important. But in the early stages, and that's just the first contact, 
the most important thing is it's just a memorable first contact because that brings all the game alive. I think actually sometimes, personally, I think that you know where I have my most fun sometimes as a GM is never in the things I've thought the greatest amount about, but always about the things that I haven't thought about that I've had to bring alive there and then because they excite me because that's the creativity that of our hobby. That's the thing that really makes us and inspires us. So if we take this in, this innkeep for a moment, and we've got this thing about not taking no for an answer, um, you know, you can then just find his voice. Now, you then can sort of think to yourself, how do you want it to come across? It could be cunningly cunning, so why not be cunning? So you could be something like, um, let's find a voice for him. So uh, let me see if I can find it immediately. Let's just find the voice. Let's just think about the voice for a moment. Yes, my friends, come, stand by the fire. That's right, warm yourselves. That's it. Are you okay? Do, would you like me to take your coat? Are you sure you wouldn't like me to take your coat? Honestly, it's no trouble at all. Listen, that's a more comfy seat than this one here. You only want the house, ale, gentlemen, gentlemen, and ladies, of course. The house, ale? Surely. Surely, people such as yourself, refined sorts, you need more. Maybe the Bretonian brandy would be more to your suiting. Come now, surely, the Bretonian brandy, the Breton are you sure you don't want the Bretonian brandy? The please, on this occasion. It is my birthday, after all. I mean, I, I can see you're upset. Listen, okay, what about the, the stew? Would you like some stew? Well, perhaps a sandwich. Perhaps, perhaps some fruit. Perhaps a mint. Come now. There must be something I can offer you. And you can just go with that and make him as irritable and annoying and as frustrating as possible. And maybe the players just leave the bloody place. But the point is that it's been caused by a little NPC that you just thought about there and then. So it it's about planting thoughts in your head. Now, there was no real exciting, you know, I couldn't completely find instantly the voice I want, but it, it did. It was fine, and um, I, I think it works quite nicely, and then later on I'd probably refine it. And I often find that with emotion, it takes one, maybe two or three stabs at it before you would settle on the norm for this. So you've already now got built in your mind as a GM, you've got built in about this barkey as an example to your question. You've already got built in at this point. He's a little bit about his personality, the, the fact that he's not going to take no for an answer, and just no does not exist in his vocabulary. And then you need to build some layers onto him, and, and those can come later. And you might find that the next time the players run into him, at least you've got the basics, but you come out with a slightly different version of the voice. I, I, I don't think that really matters, as long as eventually you settle on what is more comfortable. As long as his personality stays true, the rest will find its way. Um... You know, so I wouldn't really worry too much about it. And emotion, the most powerful NPCs I've ever created come through the fact that I draw on incredibly powerful emotions to put them across. And I don't really think about it. I just get into them. For some reason, I really enjoy playing horrible, devious women. I don't know what it is. I just thoroughly enjoy creating these very clever, very, very powerful, immensely devious women. I think it says something a lot about my personality, probably. He likes to be dominated. No, I don't think so. I think it's more a question that um, I just find the, that they have a gift for doing it. Men tend to be more obvious. Women tend to be more devious. Um, and I love that. Um, doesn't always apply, but it's just something that I, I, I think is, is a great motivator. So we will all find our strengths and weaknesses. So your question on motivation is, is very, very powerful. And uh, for that, I'm Andrew, I thank you. Um, I have a minute left on the video, so I'm just going to now quickly just go off on... Um, a completely random subject matter here and this will be for those people who've seen the video all the way through to the end which is quite deliberate on my part so I'm just going to save that for this. I'm planning on actually doing some secret videos. Now that sounds a bit devious but the point is it's I, I uh, the content is highly controversial um, and I mean really controversial. If I put the videos out there I've got a few videos that I would like to put out to the community at large and um, I just think that it would they some of them would not be received the way that they need to be received if that makes sense. Um, I'm not putting them across because I want to be a, 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 a awkward about this or a, a bit of a twat. I'm putting them across because I really believe there's some merit in those videos and that they've got something powerful to say. The question is, 
do you what would you suggest? Do you think that these videos should be secret and that, that only certain people should see them, or how should I put those videos across? Because I do think that some of the material is highly controversial. I look forward to hearing your thoughts on this video. Until the next time, take care of yourselves and happy gaming. Bye bye.